Um, we have had a lot of talk about Iran this morning at the committee, in part because Iran is the worst country in your region. They're the world's, world's worst sponsor of state terrorism. They're behind almost every proxy war in the region, to say nothing of what they're doing to try to obtain nuclear weapons. Um, if it becomes clear that Iran is actively pursuing a nuclear weapon, does Central Command um, have the resources necessary, should the Commander-in-Chief, President Biden, direct a military strike against Iran? Senator, if confirmed, I would have to look at the, resource, the mission and the resources required, and I would come back to the Chairman and the Secretary if additional resources were required. Can, can you commit that you will do that and that you'll give your best professional military judgment about what resources would be needed to carry out such a mission? Yes, Senator. Okay. Um, Senator Kane just spoke about Iran getting a nuclear weapon and how we all think that Iran should not have a nuclear weapon, and that was what President Obama frequently said in 2015 um, in defending the nuclear deal that Iran, that he would not allow Iran to obtain the bomb. I think President Biden has said something similar. Um, that leaves open the possibility that we would allow Iran to get right up to the threshold of getting a nuclear weapon, proverbial turn of the screwdriver, if you will, the way a country like Japan is today. I mean, people worry about Japan being one step away from a nuclear weapon because Japan is not run by a bunch of crazed uh, theocrats. Um, it may be one thing to say that the United States could live with an Iran that's one turn of the screwdriver away from getting a nuclear weapon. Can a country like Israel live under those circumstances, though? Or what about Saudi Arabia or the other Arab nations in the region? Senator, my, my concern would be Iran being a nuclear threshold state, that it could be very destabilizing to the region and cause others to attempt to um, work on their defense. Even if they don't have a nuclear weapon and don't have a demonstrated capability, if they are simply a nuclear threshold state, it would uh, embolden them that much more. That, that's your point? Yes, Senator. Yeah, I think you're right about that. Um, one incredibly emboldened action I've seen over the last couple months is that Iran's proxies in Yemen are firing ballistic missiles and one-way drones into the Emirates. And some of those are attacking bases where we have American troops. What, what do you make uh, of this incredibly provocative and escalatory action coming out of Iran's uh, Yemeni proxies? Senator, that's an example of Iranian malign behavior and aggressive behavior from their proxies in the region. Um, why do you think, so they, they've been doing that in Saudi Arabia, in, in so, southwestern and western Saudi Arabia for a few years. Why do you think in the last couple of months um, those proxies in Yemen are now firing those missiles and drones all the way into the Emirates? Senator, my personal opinion is part of that is because of the advances that the Giants Brigade down in Yemen took back areas like El Shabwa province from the Houthis, and that is their reaction back to the, uh, the UAE. But I would have to have, if confirmed, do a deeper study on that. What would you do if you were sitting in Abu Dhabi and you had missiles and drones flying into your territory, potentially hitting your bases or hitting the Burj Khalifa? Senator, if I'm the CENTCOM commander with forces there, I would use the Patriots and the THAAD systems that we have in the theater to shoot them down. Do you think we currently have enough of those systems in the region to protect not only our allies, but in this case, again, it was our troops, our, our troops at bases uh, in the Emirates? Senator, I think that one of the advances that we can look at doing is increasing the integrated air and missile defense in the region of our partners and allies um, to contribute to make sure that they are all integrated. I, I mean, based on, on the threat we've seen coming out of Yemen in these last couple months, I think it's going to be one of the most urgent priorities you face. It's both making sure that we have the resources we need, but also working with our partners to help them. Because I don't think, as Iran is emboldened, I don't think this threat is going to decrease. I think it's only going to increase. And again, we're just talking about it coming out of, out of Yemen, not other places where they're su supplying proxies with similar missiles or drones. Um, one final point. I kind of get irritated when I see reports about F-22s and F-35s bombing insurgencies or, you know, what, in 2017, I think we bombed a drug factory with an F-22. Can we do a better job about not using advanced fifth-generation aircraft to bomb low-threat first-generation uh, targets? Senator, as a, as, a, as a military person, if that is the only asset available, I would use that asset. I get that. I'd like to see better asset planning, though. So those aircraft are, are directed towards countries like China with advanced air defenses and fifth-generation fighters themselves and 
older generation aircraft are directed against ISIS and Al Qaeda. Sure. One final question. Um, there's also been a lot of talk about the over the horizon strike capacity in Afghanistan. I, I think that would be better termed over the rainbow strike capacity. How could we possibly be striking into Afghanistan without intelligence on the ground and when we're completely beholden to Pakistan for giving uh, access to their airspace? It's a big problem, isn't it? Senator, it's a challenge. All right. Good luck trying to conquer that challenge. We need you to. Thank you, Senator. Thank you. Thanks for watching. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to our channel. And while you're at it, please leave us a comment. Thank you for watching.